Hey, what's up, tech fans? Welcome back once again to another edition of Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Eric, your host, and today the co-host is once again JJ, Mr. Asus himself. Now, what are we going to be taking a look at today? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the Tough series of motherboards. That's right, the Chuck Norris series of motherboards. Now, Chuck Norris has been to Mars. That's why there's no life on Mars. Also, you guys know Chuck Norris one time got into a battle with Superman with a loser had to wear his underwear on the outside, so you know what's up with that one. So anyways, with that said, we've got these cool new motherboards in front of us, and Jay's going to tell us all the new specs and cool things about these boards. So what's up? What's up, boss, man? Thank you for having me. And uh, like you talked about, Chuck Norris is, is, a, is, a, is a hardcore character, and we've got a, a series of uh, really outstanding motherboards. Did, that, did you know that uh, Chuck lost his virginity before his father? <laughs> no, I did not. Yeah, it's true. Um, so, so getting back to the boards at hand. When, when Alexander Bell invented the telephone, three missed phone calls by Chuck Norris. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. All right, I'll keep that for food for thought. Food All for right. thought, man. Eat it up. Um, all right, so uh, we've got two boards here, and that in itself is, of course, really interesting because historically when we've launched the Tough series of motherboards, uh, we've only had one SKU. We've had the Sabertooth. Um, so we previously had the Sabertooth Z77. Now we've got the Sabertooth Z87. Um, but we're also actually going to be introducing an entirely new SKU. This is going to be the Griffin. Uh, this is going to be a micro ATX version uh, uh, for the Ultimate Force or the Tough series motherboard line. So. Um, there's going to be pretty much a high degree of consistency in terms of all the feature set, the functionality, the new design features that are part of the thermal armor system. Um, and they're pretty much going to be represented on both. The main differential is just going to be is one that's a micro ATX board and the other one's an ATX board. So with that, let's go ahead and first take a look at what we have on the Sabertooth C87 and see how it differs from the previous generation. One last question. Sure. Were these boards designed to take a karate chop from Chuck Norris? I'm pretty sure. I'm okay. pretty sure. I, we, we haven't integrated that yet into our QVL, but uh, you know we're working it on it. It should be the frequently asked questions. Yeah, yeah, we're working on that. Um, so we can go ahead and, and take a look at the board here. And of course, right off the bat, it's kind of kind of got the classic look that you would expect in terms of the saber tooth feature and the internal thermal armor design. But we have gone ahead and made some updates to the way that the thermal armor design works. So the first one is going to actually be these flow valves that we have integrated within the BRM section for the thermal design. So you can see here that we can essentially go ahead and move them up and down, or we can essentially close them on or off. And this allows us to go ahead and control the airflow as it's either being distributed through the internal VRM assembly in its heat sink, um, or maybe if you have your VRM uh, pulling in air, so you have maybe your top fans or your chassis serving as an intake as opposed to an exhaust, and you want to go ahead and help to bring in that air to be able to cool the additional VRM further. Uh, at the end of the day, pretty much what we're trying to provide you here is more flexibility and control about how the thermal armor system works. If you remember in previous generations, we have kind of a shut design. So essentially there's angled molded paths underneath here that direct airflow to key areas of the motherboard. We even have convection holes. So there's actually holes that are physically inside the PCB um, that allow airflow to directly pass through the motherboard and exhaust through then the back of the chassis. It's gonna come into the back of the silicone in between all the layers of the tough armor and keep the motherboard running cool. Correct, and so that adds us also an additional layer of cooling. So when you combine that all together with, of course, the previous aspects of the thermal design, it helps to really give us more functionality and versatility at keeping your board cool and enhancing the reliability and stability. Now, generally, tough isn't segmented or focused for people that are overclocking, but the board is definitely capable in terms of overclocking to the same degree as our ROG or our mainstream series. But, you know, first and foremost, the focus is for people that are generally looking at a longer term lifespan. You know, the, the board comes included with this certificate of reliability for a reason. We've, we have our tough rated components such as, our, such as our tough choke, our tough MOSFETs, and our tough capacitors. And the capacitors actually have been updated. These are using the same capacitors that are on our RG series, so the Nichicon GT 10K capacitors. 10K. Um, so when we, we integrate these components. One thing that's very important though is that we don't want to just talk about the components being the improvement here. Um, anybody can go out and pick quote unquote good quality components. The key differential is going to be that the overall board has been validated with that design specification and those components. So we take a lot of time to actually take these boards and run them for concurrent stress testing over a very long period of time where we're simultaneously using the USB, the PCI Express, 
the SATA, the memory, the CPU, all of it's getting put under load. And literally we're running it for, you know, sometimes 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 20 days at a time to test to see how the board operates under these. So really extensive testing goes into these yeah. series. And, and there's a lot more validation and reliability testing that goes into that. And that's part of the reason why the Cyber 2 series of motherboards offer a five year warranty. Now, um, going back in terms of what we have here in terms of the, in terms of the thermal armor, it's pretty consistent from the previous generation. We have the two assist fans that we go ahead and incorporate where we have what's called the GPU zone and the CPU zone. So one would go ahead and go here and another one's gonna go ahead and go in this section. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna bring out another board where I already have them mounted and you guys can check this out. So you can see right here in the centralized area, we have this uh, set up. So that goes ahead and helps to bring airflow that will go ahead and cool the board additionally so that in this section where we of course have our graphics cards as well as our PCH area which is providing all the I.O. and the information delivery to the SATA ports, we can go ahead and bring in more airflow. And in the VRM section, you can see right here that we go ahead and have another fan, which you can serve as an intake or as an exhaust. So you got a lot of flexibility. And of course, these, just like every single fan header on the board, are fully controllable, not only in our software, but in the UEFI environment. Now, uh, there is an entirely new thermal radar system. If you remember before, Tuff has always had multiple sensors sprinkled throughout the motherboard to give you a full real-time kind of thermal map of how the temperatures on the board are working in response to your system configuration and how your system is responding under load. So we still keep that, but we've added a brand new thermal assessment tool. So what it does, it'll actually measure the thermal response in specific zones and tell you how good your board is actually cooling that specific area. So it'll say this area down here is actually getting this much, this area is getting this much? Correct, and I'll actually show you kind of like in a graph format, hey, you have optimal cooling, or maybe you don't have as optimal cooling as you like, so that maybe you can go ahead and add another fan and help to bring down the temperatures overall and improve performance. One thing I really like about it is that you really don't touch any of the silicon at all, unless you really do it on purpose. The entire board is just totally protected. Yeah, and in that respect, let's go ahead and touch on one of the other new aspects which are entirely new and I'm gonna pick up the Griffin board for this perspective and you can go ahead and set that guy down uh, if we take a look right here looking at our Griffin the Griffin features an entirely new design to the thermal armor where we've gone ahead and extended and even advanced it further and that's actually going to be this right here which we call the fortifier so the fortifier one it looks cool right but there's actually some specific functionality benefits that you're going to get with it. It's going to add rigidity and minimize torsion on the board. So if you've ever taken like a big heat sink and tried to install it, you can sometimes over torque the heat sink and this can cause sometimes minor flexing or bending to the board. Um, over the long term, that's not healthy because there are traces on the motherboard that can sometimes be damaged. They short it out. Exactly. So with this, you're adding a bit more rigidity and a bit more uh, torsion resistance to the board as a whole. So that's going to be a nice improvement. Uh, now, all our PC use very high quality PCB substrate material so there's very little flex as compared to competitors where they're a lot thinner and in, in, in certain situations but this just give you kind of that other layer of confidence if we go back to let's say the ATX version which of course also features the fortifier design we can even have this serve as an actual heat sink you're gonna see right here that it's actually making direct contact with the VRM heatsink um, so it's giving you additional cooling on top and below on the VRM. Yeah, correct. The hottest part of the VRM is your MOSFETs and your drivers. And this is directly making contact with that to help to go ahead and pull heat away from that and actually disperse it across this actual entire section. So that's another benefit that the fortifier gives you. Uh, another one is just from the physical handing perspective like you talked about. There's a lot of uh, direct solder points that you have here that get created during the production of the motherboard and sometimes when you go ahead and you make contact with that you can nick, you can cut, you can scratch your fingers. So it just makes it easier to handle. So when you Much kind of, more ergonomic. Yeah. When you factor that all together, you know, uh, not only does it look cool but actually provides some really nice benefits. Now, in terms of what we've done with rounding out aspects to be able to provide additional uh, reliability and durability to the product is we've extended on what we refer to as our dust defender design. If you remember in the previous generation, we added kind of these cool covers to be able to go ahead and protect your slots. And this was important because sometimes over time, people don't realize that you get dust, debris, dander. It builds up in there. Yeah, it can actually fill up in there and you can short out your ports. If you go ahead and install a graphics card, sometimes it can actually uh, conduct static electricity. You can get a number of different variables. So this just helps to not only one look Extra cool, protection. But it helps to just provide that additional layer of security in terms of making sure that all your ports are protected. And so we have that for all the PCI Express slots. We even have it for the front headers. If we go to the back of the board, you can see that we even have uh, dust defenders for every single back I.O. port, even including your audio. So you 
you really only need to go ahead and remove the ones that you're actually going to utilize. And if you're not utilizing that port, you can go ahead and just cover, cover it back up, up and keep it dust free and make sure that it's entirely protected. So we think that that's another nice point. We of course continue to provide it for the memory. And overall, that gives you a great form of protection when you talk about thermal protection, uh, protection from the you know different types of particulates, our elements that are floating throughout your chassis and building up that could compromise the integrity. When you then factor that in, of course, with all the high-end component quality and everything else that Tough brings to the table in terms of advanced monitoring and cooling, really special board. Now, rounding things out, of course, we keep all the standard design, ASUS design points that you would expect. So we got, you know, the USB 3.0 boost technology. We have the USB charger technology. We've got our fan expert. Um, so all those things are going to continue to be there, plus some awesome new UEFI options, which we want you guys to make sure to check out the video that we're going to do in terms of UEFI options. Now, lastly, in terms of the thermal armor, you're going to see that we have these cool little thermal probes. So the motherboard itself has a whole bunch of fixed thermal probes that give you real-time temperature mapping. But for this generation, there's going to be three thermal probes that you can also affix to the motherboard. And you can go ahead and position these anywhere you want. You can put them maybe over your hard drive, inside your chassis, on the back of your graphics card. And you can always have a real-time baseline temperature for that device or wherever you have this thermal and probe. And there's how many of those in there, JJ? There are three of them there included. Of them. Um, so that's another nice value point for people that really care about kind of monitoring the system, making sure they're getting optimal cooling and performance then you can go ahead and utilize these. And there's even nice little touches like this, uh, where for the IO shield, right, we have, of course, the classic Q shield, which is padded, which helps to block electromagnetic interference. Plus, it's softer to touch, so it's easier to install. But we've even added a cool little fan filter, so that if you want to go ahead and more easily service this, when you have it installed, you can go ahead and take the little fan filter out, clean it off, and you don't have to worry about having larger uh, buildup particles, actually, when you're on the back of the board. On here. the back of the board, so nice little touch. Now, for the Griffin SKU, for you guys that are going to be interested in this MicroTX version, you do want to keep in mind that here we're showing it to you with the entire thermal armor design already in place. But when you do purchase it, it will just be the board by itself. Uh, to hit a more aggressive price point, we're going to be offering the board without the thermal armor design, but we're going to actually be offering this really cool armor kit. So the armor kit will come included with everything you would need to be able to equip your board fully with the fortifier, the armor, all these key accessories to be able to take advantage of it. You can just go ahead and purchase this and then integrate that onto your MigrateTech solution. So JJ, the Sabertooth board, though, it will come with all of this pre-installed and everything. It's, it's only the Griffin board that you need to buy it separately, correct? That's correct. The Griffin board will come without the thermal armor, without the fortifier, but you can get the actual Griffin kit here, which will include everything. As you can see right here, all the covers in terms of your dust defenders for your PCIe slots. You'll have all the covers uh, for all the dust defender for your I.O. ports. The fan, we even include this uh, little screwdriver so you can go ahead and, and get everything all installed for you. So that'll all be included inside of a box that you can go ahead and purchase as an option uh, for the Griffin SKU. So overall, you know, if you're looking for a really great board, you know, and you're looking more towards generally a longer term build, right? You know, not necessarily as focused at overclocking. You just want a great solid board. You know, you do a little bit of everything, you know, you kind of maybe do some gaming, maybe you do some general productivity, you're online, you're downloading music. You just kind of want a solid, good quality desktop, but you want to be able to take advantage of monitoring, advanced cooling technologies, you know, that's where Tough is going to be in line for you. Not to mention that for those people out there who are looking to build a custom build on like a military type theme, this board fits right in on that with the color scheme. Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely there's always been a complimentary kind of ethos in terms of, you know, a, a military vibe with the Tough series, especially with the military uh, components uh, that go through that validation process. But, you know, at the end of the day, we feel that the feature set on here is always first and foremost targeted at users that are interested in reliability, monitoring and cooling, and of course are looking for that extra layer of ASUS functionality, whether it's in the fan controls, the UEFI, or the great power delivery options that we're offering. Right on. Just all kinds of good stuff coming with this. I can't wait till these things come out. Like I said before, our tech, Anthony Reynolds, he really loves all of the Tough series. That's like he always builds every new new set that comes out. He builds a theme model off it. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a system built off one of these real soon as well. So, all right, folks, that's it. We've got lots of more stuff coming out with the Haswell release. I'm Elric. This is JJ, and we'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow.